Black we are at a uh, live day. briefing Jeffrey right Black now uh, with the White House. Uh, Jim Psaki is uh, getting ready to preside over this here. So I just wanted to see what's going on, uh, especially in the case of a Russia-Ukraine situation. So let's listen in. Past, reckon with centuries of injustice and confront those injustices that still fester today. The president, vice president, and first lady, second gentlemen, cabinet officials, and White House staff will host meetings and activities this month centered around the 2022 Black History Month theme, Black Health and Wellness. This includes a focus on physical wellness, mental health, environmental justice, economic growth, and spiritual wellness. White House senior staff will also host important stakeholder discussions on diversity in media, veteran wellness, and increased support for HBCU students. Last but certainly not least, we will celebrate and acknowledge the invaluable role Black faith leaders have played in communities across the nation, uh, particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. This is, of course, just a brief overview. Uh, stay tuned for more announcements. Uh, Zeke, with that, why don't you kick us off? You know, <clears throat> I didn't know this was, just, this was going to be on Black History Month, but it just kind of makes me... Uh, I think about the situation with Whoopi Goldberg the other day who came out and uh, she was ostracized for her comments made about the Holocaust. Uh, and I was actually shocked by that because not by Whoopi Goldberg, but by the response of uh, the Jewish community coming against her on this because she said it was man, uh, let's see, in, man's inhumane uh, uh, Treatment of man is what it really should be. And so she was actually correct in this. Otherwise, it is turned into a race issue, uh, and it's like one race is superior over the other. So that was a little bit troubling for me to to hear about that. And uh, uh, so anyway, we're looking at, let's join back in here because I see she's talking about Romania. Let's see what she says. Second, we are moving 1,700 service members from Fort Bragg to Poland and approximately 300 service members from Fort Bragg to Germany. Uh, both of these moves are to supplement existing U.S. force presence in Poland and Germany. Uh, these forces are separate and in addition to the 8500 personnel in the United States on heightened alert position uh, posture that we announced last week. But I would also note, Zeke, just to finish your, the answer, answering your question that, um, you know, the president has been clear uh, since the beginning of uh, the escalation uh, uh, and, the, and the building of troops at the border and been directly clear with President Putin in, as he was in early December. If Russia stays on an escalatory path, which they clearly have, we will make forced posture adjustments to deter and defend against any aggression. This is not uh, troops that will go into Ukraine. They're not fighting in Ukraine. Uh, these, this is us, uh, this is the United States abiding by our commitments uh, under Article 5 to support, reassure our partners in the region. For the, what is the, the milestone the president is looking for to, for those troops to come back home? What is the issue? Is if, if Russia de-escalates those troops, it would go back to... To their, to their bases? Is that? Well, I think as you touched on, it's not permanent. They're not intended to be permanent. And again, we already had a uh, true presence uh, in all of these countries where we are uh, doing uh, an increase in troops. Um, so I can't give you an evaluation. Obviously, if Russia decides to de-escalate, to take de-escalatory steps, uh, then certainly that would impact uh, what the force posture needs are in other parts of the region. Uh, Senator Hawley uh, was at the state today saying that the, uh, uh, the, the president should sort of take NATO membership off the table for Ukraine and it wasn't in U.S. interest to do that. Do you think that sort of rhetoric or sort of you know, position by a U.S. senator right now is helpful in this, in this showdown between the West and, and Russia? Well, if you are dis digesting Russian misinformation and parroting Russian talking points, uh, you are not aligned uh, with a long-standing bipartisan American values which is to stand up for the sovereignty of countries like Ukraine, but others, uh, their right to choose their own alliances. Uh, that's so fascinating, her saying that. Uh, wow. Or attempts or potential attempts There's no such thing as being in the middle of this, is there? No middle road, just only uh, whatever uh, the said at the White House, and that's it. Parroting the talking points of Russian propagandist leaders. Different topic. Um, there's been a lot of reporting the last couple of uh, days about how the U.S. is setting it per, on a per capita basis with peer developed countries. The, the death rate in the United States is far outpacing what's being seen abroad, largely as a result of the lower vaccination and boosting rates here, as well as some other comorbidities and the like. But does the president feel that he bears responsibility that, you know, a year into office with this new wave that the U.S. wasn't better prepared and that more people are dying here on a per capita basis than are in Europe, for instance? Well, the buck always stops with the president, and he would say that. 
Uh, but I would also tell you, Zeke, that um, the steps that we have taken uh, to make progress, to prepare in the United States far outweigh what almost any other country in the world has done to date. Uh, that includes ensuring uh, that 87% of the population has had at least one dose. Uh, in, in, in yeah, well, <clears throat> we can skip this part of the meeting there. I just want to kind of get an idea of what was going on in the case of Russia uh, and Ukraine, the situation that's happening there, because that is uh, escalating. And, uh, you know, so we're just trying to keep a watchful eye on this. And, of course, it takes both sides to de-escalate. As we build up, Russia builds up, it's not going to change anything. And uh, Russia is not necessarily a poster child, but neither is uh, uh, Hunter Biden nor President Biden either, who are being getting uh, millions of dollars of profit for every cubic foot of gas that is not pumped uh, via Russia's Nord Stream pipe to, uh, pipeline uh, into Germany. So there's some big kickbacks going on. And you know what's interesting is you can't say that when you have meetings with the president, like what's causing the problems in Ukraine, you're not allowed to speak about that. I'm Steve Benun, you're listening to Israeli News Live, and of course, Kiwi the dog in the background there. Uh, have a great afternoon. And I am working on a broadcast for Patreon right now about Planet X, some things that I didn't even share in the conference because I didn't have all my notes together.